there, it's Lisa. Thanks for stopping by to look at my Necromancer coffin vignette. Just run over it real quick. At the end I do have uh, just a couple of tips on how to make the skeleton and a couple other little things. I didn't do a full tutorial because I actually didn't think it would turn out this cool, but um, there are a few uh, things at the end that might interest you if you're hoping to make something similar. Uh, the head is a Tim Holtz skull. The body is just a Dollar Tree where you get six for a dollar skeleton that I altered. Uh, you'll see Tim Holtz bubbles, the cauldron, the cat is one of uh, Tim Holtz Halloween accent charms. You have to excuse all the shaking hand if you will, I'm, I don't have the official setup so hopefully I can get things to focus right. The books are print offs off the internet. The 101 Human Skin was actually a real book at some point in time. I thought it would be proper for this since he's got to grow his skin back of course. Tombstone is Tim Holtz Tombstones with a remnant rub that says Anita Shovel. So that's why I named him Dr. Shovel the Necromancer. And you can see his wife coming out of the ground. Uh, Tim Holtz Urn filled with pieces of wood from the Dollar Tree uh, from one of those little brooms that is supposed to smell like pumpkin spice. Well, it's almost Halloween. I got one of the Tim Holtz vignette coffins. Aren't they great? I love them. Just a nice wood panels, pretty sturdy, and was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with it. And as I was, I had out my Dollar Tree skeletons. You get them six for a dollar. They're also available at many craft stores and you know, just one form or another, but they're pretty close to all the same. They usually look like this one, and you'll have six on the rope together. This one I only painted with a coat of white gesso or just white acrylic plant woodwork and the only reason why I did that was because I'm going to add some other colors to it and that will give me a base to help those colors stick. So let's get to it and see what we can make. As I do want him seating in a sitting position, so I'm going to clip him at the joints and I'm going to want him holding a book so I'm going to clip his little elbows as well. So to put this in the position that I want it to be to start with, I'm just going to hot glue on his little kneecaps back. Make sure, or try to, well, it doesn't look like he have, has any toe in any certain direction. And I'm just going to put it in a 90 degree angle so he can sit. Take it a second to dry. And I'm going to do the same with the arms and legs and get them all in the positions that I want them to be. Now, you can also arch their back and spine by heating it up and then twisting them and holding them in a certain position. I think I'm going to do that with his head, and I'll do that before I do the arms since I'm going to have to add a lot of heat and it'll just make my hot glue melt. So I'm going to want him in my little coffin, sitting sort of like at an angle, well, sitting like this, but I want him turned toward me a little bit more. And maybe have his head down so he's looking at the book. Let's see if we can arch him just a little bit. Now, of course, anytime you're heating up plastic, you want to not have the fumes going up your nose. So either wear a mask or have a fan blowing to blow the fumes away. And if you overdo it and he really falls apart, it's all right, just hot gluing back together. So I'm going to turn his body a little bit this way, push his head down. This is where if you had the compressed air, the cold compressed air, and you sprayed it on, it would like make him stay in that position really quick. But I don't have any handy. He's a failure. Come on, little dude, you can do it. I'm trying to get in a hurry and not holding it in place. Blow on it. Remember, if you 
your hands are up, your thumbs are out. Which one's the thumb? I don't know. It's all gooby. Okay, so now I'm going to add some flesh. And the way I do that is I just take my glue gun and E. Just rub it in. And once we add some colorant to it, it will look all goopy and be just perfect for a little vignette. And you know what? The strings are good. The strings make it look more sinewy and rotten-y. It's just perfect. And of course it's a craft so you don't need to be perfect. I say that but then if something isn't right a lot of times I'll redo it. Rend over his head and his face. I try to avoid his eyes and his mouth because you want that skeletal feature to be prominent. Okay. So now just another idea on how to do flesh and you obviously don't have to do any of these steps. You could just use skeleton as is but this is just an old um, freezer bag that I had some yarn in it got a hole in it so I just took a piece of it and I'm just going to rip it like that and then while my hot glue is still a little hot and goopy to give him a fleshy look I'm just going to tear just stick it on like that and then, and of course, like I said, you don't have to do this, but then I will take my heat tool and melt it. Let it curl up, um, obviously watch your fingers, and I'll just press it if it's not going the direction I want it to. And if it doesn't turn out to be the way you want it to be, just rip it off and do another one. But that way when you add your colorant to it, you'll have a little bit more flesh. There it is. And you can also do that around joints to make them more... Um, stable. I guess this knee is giving me grief. So, and sometimes you do have to work with it a little bit if this is the technique you want to use. Because sometimes it just likes to fight you back a little bit. Plus you're working on a mini scale and I'm one of the women who does not have the pretty little petite hands. Never have, even in my skinny days. Just always had those almost man hands. But now I'm okay with them because they work good and I'm blessed with them. So, a little bit of arthritis, not enough to keep me down. And they've always been there when I needed them. A lot of carpal tunnel, but yeah, working with that too. And again, you'll have to hold it while the glue and the plastic sets. We have two pairs of tweezers. Me and this guy are having it out. Usually I don't have this many problems. It's probably just because I'm filming. But he's a squirmy little guy. So I am going to add a little bit more flesh here. Also I can stick this up in there. And melt it. And it will give it more of a, a place for the inks that I'm going to add. And the paints to go to. So that his ribs are not so shallow. And just melt that up in there. Oh, wrong tool. in with some black paint. Uh, in this case I'm just going to use some of the Waverly chalk paint. But it could be any black paint just to give him a little bit of depth with his eyes and just touch him in there barely. I think I want his teeth to show up a little bit better too so I'm going to put some black paint on them and then just rub them off. too much down there. So just wipe it off with some water. 
Don't you look at me when I'm talking to you, buddy. There you go. Now that I have him some fleshy stuff, time to give it some ooky gooky color to make it look like he is trying to come back from the dead. Let's see, I'm going to back here just in case that part's seen. Strings. Alrighty. Decided to put down a black piece of paper. I thought maybe you could see him a little bit better. I think we're painting white. It makes it really difficult on the camera. It doesn't want to focus on him real clear. Harry looks pretty spooky to me. Okay. So to color him and to add some, you could either use some watered down acrylic paint and just drip it over him, or some acrylic, um, not acrylic, some alcohol markers and color on just the glue parts. I'm going to use some alcohol inks in a few different colors. Oh, strings. Should have kept them on him. Um, and the way that I do that, I'm going to switch out again to the white paper because I don't want to ruin this piece of good black cardstock. You can see why I have the paper down now because it, this non-stick pad has a glare to it for the camera. But I'm just going to let it drip on him. Just a drip. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, just a drip. There you go. Just a drip. Let it run. Let the drips run all over his new fleshy body. Isn't that horrible? Oh, I love it. So gruesome. Maybe a little bit right there too. And we'll get a couple other colors in there. <laughs> Looks like he's laying in a pool of blood. Terrifying. So the red one that I just used is the Adirondack Tim Holtz Earth Tone Alcohol Ink and Cranberry. And then I'm going to use a little mushroom color and do the same thing just let it drizzle get it all over my fingers some people might want to wear gloves I usually just spray my hands with alcohol after I'm done let's see maybe another color this is a uh, lemonade give him a little bit more of a skin tony sort of yellowish so I'm going to add some brown on there too. And some more brighter red. Just make him all gooped up. He's going to be sitting back in the coffin anyway. So, okay, there it is. Watermelon. It's a brighter red. And then just some really few little touches of teak wood, or you could use espresso brown, just one of the darker browns. Espresso, I mean, espresso. And I'm going to show you what 
No, as you can see, I just doubled his face in it. You're like, ugh, it looks horrible. But wait, just a second. Now I'm going to go in with some rubbing alcohol. Let me get myself a paper towel. And I'm going to go in with some rubbing alcohol in spray. If you're more careful than I am, of course, you don't even have to go through this, but I sort of like the effect it gives. Then I just give it a quick squirt with rubbing alcohol. And then just dab. I'm a dead guy. Look. <laughs> it almost looks like little eyelashes. He's horrible, isn't he? It's disgusting. Now that's what he looks like when you have painted him in white. I did one without the painting in white first, and I almost like him better. I think. I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. So this is the mini skeleton painted with white acrylic paint first. The mini skeleton left in its natural color and both treated exactly the same way. Creepy little brothers. I'll be using some of the Tim Holtz Etc. Bat Web trims. And when you buy them, they come in a package. You get 4 inch, 5 inch, 6 inch Bat Web trims plus 36 stacking ledges. So all of this is just in one package. And you get three like that. And then three like this. So you could use them as they are or like as a you know background push it out further or you know, let your imagination fly. It's quite the deal with the MDF board type stuff. So when you see that, you'll know what it is. Temples, etc. by Stampers Anonymous. So now I have to design some kind of little seating. I know I'll never use all these little sticks that come with the webbings. So, and they're really easy to get out. You just pop them out with your finger. Just like that. And don't throw this away. You have all this other MDF board type stuff that you can make something with. Um, like I might make the base of my seat out of that. And this could be the legs. So I might give that a try and see how that goes. For the porch, I need something that can go under his feet and will help support the coffin so it doesn't tip over. I could use one of the Ideology feet, but I'm thinking I will go with one of these adverts. They are about the exact thickness, well they are the exact thickness, of the coffin.